increase so that the people have their minds and hearts and their souls open to receive your word. Your word will be shared with us. And every day that we learn through the ups and downs that we are thankful that you are always there for us. You provide for us. And your word is precious and it helps us grow. It gives us the nutrients we need to grow every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The topic, slaying doubt. How many of you know the story? You know this story. It's about Thomas. Yes, Thomas. Where can you find this in the Bible? John chapter 20, verse 24 through 29. The doubter. John chapter 20, verse 24 through 25. One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, his nickname was Twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I would see the nail wounds in his hands and put my fingers into them and place my hands into the wounds in his side. Thomas, you know, everyone's saying like, oh, yeah, yeah, Jesus rose from the dead. You know, last week we talked about Easter and the women, they saw Jesus and then he said, go, share the, share the news. So they ran. And I'm sure the disciples, you know, they were sad and then grieving. And, you know, he had died. What are we going to do now? Do we have to continue this? What do we do? What do we do? Jesus isn't here. And I'm sure this is going through their thoughts, right? What do we do? So, you know, they were already in this mindset. I guess we would have to go back to work and figure this out. And the women are saying, okay, Jesus is risen. And all 11 are saying, what, really, this, this happened? He, ri- he rose from the dead, and they believed it. But Thomas, he said, he's like, you know, Jesus rose from the dead. Mm, I'm not too sure about that. We, knew, we know he died. But, you know, all the other ones believed instantly, and he was the only one that doubted. His nickname was Twin. as a Hebrew name. Thomas means twin in Hebrew. Thomas, I'm sure he, w- you know, he was grieving. He was going through these emotions, and he was sad, and he was probably confused, thinking about, you know, what can I do now? And now he's starting with his imagination, and he's exaggerating, and his mind is wandering. But Jesus has risen, right? And he's walking up. And he started to to doubt this happened. Maybe he was in denial and, you know, Jesus didn't die. And, you know, he was probably, you know, at rock bottom with his ministry and in despair. How many of you guys feel like you're in despair and you're saddened because someone says something bad about you? Or, you know, how would you feel? You'd feel sad and you'd feel hurt. But if you lose someone in your family, how do you feel? You're sad and you're grieving and you're, you sometimes you don't say, is this r- true? Did they really die? Uh, like, it's hard to, to grasp and, um, and believe, right? When my grandfather died, he died when I was pregnant with my daughter, Chloe. I was in a state of, you know, he died and I knew he died, but I hadn't grieved myself. I didn't have the energy to. All my thoughts and my emotions, you know, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how, you know, maybe this is how Thomas felt. You know, if he rose from the dead, my grandfather, I'd be thrilled. But, you know, Thomas was blessed with that to be able to see that. But I'm sure he was confused. And he, he started to distance himself from the disciples. He says, you believe, oh, Jesus rose, but I, I'm not too sure myself. You know, he's probably saying, you're a fool. Jesus is dead. All these thoughts going through his head. And as we read the Bible, we know Thomas did doubt. And he refused to believe it until he saw it himself. 
He wanted to see it for his own eyes. And sometimes, you know, when something happens and our friends say something, we're like, okay, it didn't happen unless I saw it, right? If I don't see it, it didn't happen. But we have to believe. Jesus died on the cross, and the disciples believed instantly that he rose from the dead. But sometimes in our lives, we have doubt. We doubt for different reasons. We're not sure, and we're saying, did this actually happen? But we forget God is always there. He always provides. But we have to take out the doubt in our lives. Whatever, if we're grieving and we're heartbroken and whatever's going on, God is always with us. Thomas made this. He said, okay, let me see it. And I'm sure the disciples were saying, okay, yeah. And they're excited. They're like, okay, you want to see the proof? That's fine. Here, Jesus, we'll get him. Jesus knew Thomas was going to doubt. But I'm sure they wanted to see the reaction from the disciples until Jesus walks up. I'm sure when Thomas saw this, right, He's probably confused, right, shocked that this is Jesus and he's walking up. I'm sure he, like, touched his hand. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, you're there? Okay, you've got your beard still? This is you? I can't see through you. I mean, I'm sure he was analyzing every part of him. You're alive. You're breathing. Do you remember my name? What's my name? I'm sure he's asking a bunch of questions. His mind was set on him dying, and that was it. But he had to change his thoughts. What happens next? Who was Thomas? Let's talk about it. Okay, who was he? He doubted, right? One of the 12 disciples. He was most famous for doubting in the Bible because he didn't believe Jesus really rose from the dead. You know, he had to prove with his physical body in order to get Thomas to believe. Jesus dying on the cross. We know that story. Is Jesus dead? No. How do you know that? Because he rose from the grave, right? Every year we celebrate Easter and we remember Jesus rose from the dead. He died on the cross on Good Friday, three days, and then he rose from the dead to show the people who he is. God, the Son of God, doing a miracle, healing, making the people believe and follow him. Doubting Thomas, he lacked what? Faith, right, faith. When the time was coming close to Jesus dying, they had their ministry of healing and praying and feeding people with the miracles and Jesus' power. They, he had seen all this through his, his time with Jesus. And, you know, when he died and rose, uh, he, he raised Lazarus from the dead. And uh, another boy who died. He had all these miracles. The disciples saw these with their own eyes. And they grew in their faith. And people knew Okay, we can share this gospel, and, and they would learn more and more about Jesus. And then when Jesus left, the disciples took that information and what Jesus had done in his ministry, and they wanted to be like him. How many of you know the number, how many disciples, right? He picked 12. 
why what was his draft order? Did he pick him in order? Thomas was number eighth. Number eight. Eighth in line. His name Judas Thomas. Judas and Thomas, but in Greek the language Diabos Thomas it means twin. So he was a twin. Of who? There's a lot of people that have debates, and we can't be certain. The Bible doesn't really make this clear and evident to us, but we can assume some people say he was a twin of Judas. Or they say he was a twin of Jesus. That's the scholarly debate, but the Bible doesn't say. We know Jesus did have brothers, four brothers, but not twin. People could argue, but we can look at the scripture, and we know he was a twin. But who was his brother? doesn't say, but God chose not to disclose that information to us. Was it his brother one of the followers? Maybe not a disciple? But sometimes you read the Bible and there's things we just don't know. But when we focus on the negative, right? He's famous for what? Thomas is. For doubting, right? One person said yesterday, this was interesting. You know social media. It tends to stick and it stays around. And the Bible is basically a social media of sorts. It stays around forever. Now we're stuck with the title of doubter, right? Thomas got stuck with that. But you focus on, did you know he was one of the disciples that was the strongest and lo most loyal? He was very loyal to Jesus. If you read the scriptures, you see this. We talked about Lazarus, right? You know the story of Lazarus? People said to Jesus, he's dying. And the disciples were standing around like, oh. And why? Because the Pharisees, the people were planning to kill Jesus. They already knew that that was rumored. So to go over there, it would be dangerous for Jesus. And Jesus was taking a risk to be killed or captured at that time. It could have happened. And you know why Tom, you know what Thomas said? He said, ah. I'll go with you. If we die, we die. Read the story. You, you see him say that. He was very loyal to Jesus. But where was he at when the cross was happening, right? But sometimes people pick and choose to take the picture. But as a whole, he was very loyal. And he really loved Jesus so much. When Jesus died, he was devastated. Jesus said, oh, you know, Jesus has risen from the dead, oh, baloney. And I'm sure he really wished it was true, but he knew it wasn't going to happen unless he saw it with his own eyes. And I'm sure he was shocked and thrilled to see Jesus. Yeah, are you really alive, right? To feel in his side the, the scars and the piercing but Thomas doubts, and that's a lot like us. When he doubts, we have a lot of doubt. D doubting Thomas is in our lives. You look at just this, but, you know, okay. Shame on you, Thomas. You're the one that doubted. But have you looked at yourself in the mirror? Shame on you. You've doubted, Joey. Shame on you, doubting Marissa. We are like Thomas in a lot of ways, honestly. When God showed, you know, the ministry, oh, like maybe you're going to have a, a new job in the future and this and that. And you're like, oh, is this really in store for me? I don't know. Wait, wait, I'm going to wait for it to happen and then I'll be searching. The, okay. Oh, then I've got the proof the first and second and third time. And, but all we have to do is say, okay, is this your plan? I trust in you that you'll take care of everything and provide. And sometimes we have to get rid of this doubt. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to do this. I'm not sure if this is how it should go. Right? 
Yeah. He did struggle with faith. Jesus died. And he said, I thought you were all these things, and maybe that was all talk. He didn't understand the full message of Jesus, of course. You know, sometimes we read it, and we don't understand. And then we see it, and we're like, oh, okay. Before, I wasn't able to understand some of the verses, but then God had applied it, opened up my eyes, and now I'm able to understand things better. We are like Thomas. We doubt. Who was Thomas? The slide said, basically, it's, it's me and you. You can say that yourself. It's me. We will go through doubt. We're kind of getting ahead of our preaching, but basically, Jesus still loved Thomas, even though he was doubting Jesus. And you remember that Jesus loves you when you doubt as well. It's a human nature. We have flesh. We will have doubt. We usually say, okay, you know, we, we see it until, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. She'll say that to me. I, I, I doubt it. Let me see it. She says that. My kids say that, and they're like, let me see it. Oh, okay, ice cream. They don't say that because they know I'll take them. But or maybe it's like Santa, and they're like, okay, they're doubting. But Santa, yeah, I hope there's no one that's here that believes in Santa Claus still. Ho, 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 he's, he's here. Come on, don't, it's not me. <laughs> yes, but basically I'm telling you, Santa does exist in a different kind of way. But that kind of thing, that's why I tell my kids. Right, okay. Do you know everything? Okay, no comments, let's go. But basically, the tooth fairy, the Easter bunny, and Santa, they do exist. In a way, and it's, it's how you explained it and uh, explain it in truth. But... Anywho, when we have doubt, things will become weak. We question and we start to be uncertain and we have these doubts. And we're like, is this really, really happening? We're not, cer we're not certain. And then it breaks your confidence. And it hurts more. I told my wife this quote. And she put it in here. I tell her this from time to time. Doubt is a faith killer. Once doubt creeps in, your faith becomes weak. The foundation becomes weaker. Really, there's so many things that can kill your faith. So what is doubt? And sometimes we doubt, and it's we're doubting about our future. We're doubting about maybe we're supposed to move, or we're, we're getting this job, and we're doubting about our relationship. And yeah, our marriage is supposed to thrive, but all these things are happening. There's so many problems, and we're, we're doubting about the church ministry and the church growing, and we're not, we're not certain about all these thoughts, and we doubt, but that's killing our faith, right? If we're doubting, all we're doing is, you know, all we need to do is, you know, if I've lost my ministry and I've lost my faith and everything and I'm in despair, it brings you down more and more by doubting. Okay, I want to finish school. And then I get there and I'm not sur sure if I can pass this class because I have an F now and I don't know what to do. And you have three months and you might have plenty of time to catch up. But now you're saying, oh, I, I can't do it. I'm not going to succeed. I can't make it to my goal. I'm just going to withdraw from the class and quit because I'm not doing well. But you're letting the doubt destroy your faith. You can say, I can. I can do everything. And through God, everything is possible. But we forget about that. And we're like, oh, I, I, I don't know if I can get there. I'm not going to get my job. I, I'm just going to stay here because I'm comfortable. And I'd rather do it myself. I doubt that I can, you know, these things will happen. But we say, wait a minute. 
God, I've lost my job. I've lost my ministry. I've lost my relationships. I've lost whatever it is. And God says, all of your problems, give them to me and everything is possible through me. And our minds are limited. We say we can't, we can't, we can't. And we doubt. And it brings us down. It brings us down. And that doubt will kill your faith. And your faith is going to diminish. And yeah, you have your faith and you're doing fine. And you hit one roadblock and one storm in your life. And Satan attacks, and he knows your weak points. And then you stumble, and then he attacks you again. And you're stumbling, and you're stumbling, and you think, well, will I really succeed? Look at where I'm at now. It's impossible. I better just take a step back. No. Move on forward. Break through that to arrive to the finish finish line. You want to increase your faith? Throw out your doubt. And we live in doubt sometimes every day with our lives and we doubt, oh, are we getting this new car or should we buy a used car or should we buy a house or should we s- get an apartment? And we're not sure, but money, money, money. What are we going to do about the money? And God says, I will provide everything as possible. Just run to me and he will take care of it. So we see things on earth and we say, okay, we're going to doubt. But we can ask Jesus to come alongside us and help us. And sometimes we forget. You know, according to God's will, of course, God will provide. So, I have faith God's going to give me a Ferrari. I'm going to go buy it, and I'm going to put it on my credit card. I just have to come up here because I want to make a point. We oh, God says, You know, I've called you to move, I've called you to buy, I've called you to do these things, right? You trust God when he says that. If God says it, it will happen, period. So we may doubt, and and that's tough, but why do we doubt? And how does that kill your faith? Okay, so for example, God says, I've called you to move to... Missouri, we'll just use our own example, right? Missouri. And we said, if this is your will, we'll go. At that time, I had no job. It was funny because a long time ago, we were like, oh, we're staying in California our whole lives. We're never moving. And, you know, if God tells us to move, we're not going to move. We were stubborn. That was our flesh. But we were looking around, and we said, oh, Missouri is beautiful. We finally surrendered. We're like, we're ready to move. And he told us to stay. But it was all right because that's what God wanted. And one time, God said she needs to visit someone, to go fly and go visit someone. And we looked at the flights, and we're like, okay, God said to go to see this person. And they were sick with some health problems. And we're like, okay. We figured out the flights weren't too bad. We paid for it. And he said, no, your whole family is going to go. And he clearly told us that. We said, the whole family, we're going to drive in a small Honda Civic. And we don't have money at that time. And we're like, how are we going to do this? And we said, Lord, if you're sure, like, I could just pay for a flight. We could afford one flight ticket, one plane, but the whole family to drive, the whole family to go, to stay longer than expected in the food and the hotel and We said, okay, Lord, you said so, and I heard it clearly. You provide a way. And you know what happened the next day? The roof over there at the chapel came apart, and it felt like, and the pastor said, hey, I need someone to come help me fix this up and remodel it. And we volunteered and remodeled it, and we got a thick paycheck for helping out. They paid us well. And the person said, God told me to to buy this thing, a roof rack for the car. Uh, it's not cheap and we said okay and we took that and we had some car issues and my cousin said I'll fix it for you and all these things God had started to provide in our lives and we took our whole trip there and we came all the way back and the car broke down once we arrived at home but God provided everything and I could have just sent her alone and we could have you know just doubted and said you go by yourself But we wouldn't have seen all these provisions by God. And if we doubt and said, we can't afford it, we can't, we can't, we can't, we wouldn't have gone. You know, it would have stopped us. But we trusted in God, and he said, do it. So we did. 
if we let the the doubt stop us, there's no telling, you know. We, the ministry, for example, we weren't planning on applying, but God said do it. We're like, okay. And we did, and here we are, and God's been with us. And yes, there's ups and downs. But doubt does creep up in our life. We have to take a step back and have faith. The roof was a big one. How? How? With the money, it's not cheap. It wasn't just a small roof on your house, $10,000, $20,000. This is a massive roof and a big structure. And we said, God, what do we do? And we trusted in him. And then COVID happened. We were outside anyway. So we did okay. We were saying, we could have said, oh, let's just shut down. We're, gonna, we're, we're not going to be able to make it. And it's not easy. And doubt can kill many things including your faith, your relationships. John chapter 20, verse 26. Eight days later, the disciples were together again. This time, Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. He said, peace be with you. So the disciples were meeting together. And everything was locked up and they were having their time together. And then Jesus was standing among them and he said, what? I'm here. I'm, I've been, I'm risen from the grave. And they were like, oh, he's there. He's alive. And Thomas was seeing this for the first time. He's saying, okay, Jesus is here, and now my doubt is gone. I'm at peace. Jesus says, peace be with you. And he believed. John chapter 20, verse 27. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound of my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. He says, I'm here. You can touch me. It's real life. I'm here. Believe. You know, sometimes we doubt, right? And sometimes, okay, we'll change it out. So if if you if you're Thomas and you see Jesus, would you be uncertain you're like I'm I'm not sure I'm confused is he a ghost like wh- who is this person we'd say the same thing but he said come here come here and Thomas is like should I go should I should I walk over there and the disciples are like go and they already knew and then Thomas is like uh, 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 okay you know a little scared I'm sure oh you know John you go first you touch him first make sure he's really there and they're like yes he's real he's there let me hug him You know, I'm sure we would have done the same thing. So we touched his hands and his wrists, whatever it is, and and knew it was real life. Is he still a doubter or is he a believer? Does he believe? Why, you know... Why are you guys certain he's a believer? Because he touched his hands, right? So if you doubt, it's going to destroy your faith. To have faith is to believe. And you believe and your faith increases. And you believe in God that you will take care of everything, Lord. And we depend on you. You will provide. We trust in you. You take care of the situation. We'll follow you. And if you neglect that and you, and you you have your doubt, and, oh, uh, for my job, I can take care of it myself. And, oh, do I need God? No, I can take care of it myself. And you're not certain because of the world. And and you say, okay, or you could say, God, I believe you'll take care of everything. Take care of everything and all you have to do is ask. And, and within his timing and his will, he will take care of everything in the perfect way, way beyond your expectations or your plans.
John chapter 20, verse 28 through 29. My Lord, my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. So Thomas is on his knees. He's saying, I believe. Yes, and Jesus is saying, yes, you believe. But the people who are are blessed without seeing. Now, okay, this applies to us because we can't see Jesus today, right? What do we do? We still believe. We still have faith, right? We walk in faith. We grow by trusting in him. And today, we have to trust in him and have faith. We have the Bible to guide us, and we have our phones with the Bible on them, and if, you know, we have all these reminders of things to believe, and maybe when we're doubting and we're not sure in our everyday lives, maybe we're forgetting the verse or scripture, and then someone tells us maybe, or we see it on Facebook or Instagram, and we're like, oh, right, I believe in him. Yes, he'll take everything, take care of everything. We need to keep going. And when we die, we will be going to heaven, and we will see Jesus, and we can hug him. And we can be excited to honor him and to thank him for forgiving us of our sins so that we can go to heaven to see him. And we'll have our peace. Thank you. You know, sometimes Holy Spirit speaks through maybe at church or so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it looks like a seed in his hand, right? What was I going to say? Okay. Do you know why we plant seeds? What happens? So that they can grow roots. And God says you are either planting doubt. If you plant seeds of doubt, you're going to have doubt. If you plant faith, you're going to have faith that grows. So that, that hit me looking at that picture. What are you planting in your life? Are you planting doubt or faith? We all have the choice. Every day we can make a row and plant some faith. And it will grow. So I'm looking at, wow. But now it makes me realize, what am I planting? Faith or doubt? We want to be able to plant faith. Thomas immediately says, I believe you, and he honored. I'm sure he's like, yes, you are my Lord, you are my God, and how much he honored and respected God. And I'm sure he was telling him about how he feels, and, you know, I'm sure he's crying, and he was so excited that Jesus was alive, and he was thrilled to touch him and hug him and talk to him. And Jesus didn't say, oh, what's wrong with you? you? You didn't believe. You doubted. He didn't say that. He hugged him, and he showed him love. He knew that he was going to doubt ahead of time. He knew Judas was going to betray him, but he still loved both of them. And now Thomas, he's doubting, and he still loved him. He picked him up, I'm sure. You know, sometimes when when we're like, what's wrong with you? Are you serious? Why would you do that? But Jesus doesn't act like that.
Verse 29, then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. We are in that position where we read the Bible and we know Jesus and we know about heaven, but we live our lives and, you know, blessings will pour out depending on our faith. We understand Jesus and we depend on him and he's done many things. He's done miracles. He does heal. Um, he, sh- he, he fed people and he shared the gospel and we can see that in the Bible and we want our faith to grow and we want to w- walk in faith. And how do we do that? We, we, we read the Bible and we l- motivated to learn more. And we're all given different gifts. We all have different talents. And we need to get a ho- take hold of that talent. And we want to grow in our faith. And we serve the Lord. And we read our Bible. And he will provide blessings every day. Thomas found faith through his doubt. He believed, but that's where he found his faith. Yeah, he was faithful, and Jesus died. You know, he was heartbroken, and he was upside down. He didn't know what to do, and he, he didn't have the faith. And so he had to get rid of that doubt, see Jesus, and now he has his faith, and he's growing it. He fought and fought through his doubt. And he was at rock bottom. And he was thinking and thinking and until he saw Jesus. Then he knew that Jesus didn't forsake him. He, he was loyal to Jesus. He was faithful. He didn't say, oh, Jesus doesn't love me because I doubted and he's rejected me. He ran to Jesus and Jesus hugged him back. And knew he wasn't rejected because he doubted. And he showed him love. And his love is overflowing. He has so much love for us. And yes, we do have our struggles in our daily lives. And we do have doubt. But we have to take the step back and say, okay, why are we in this position of doubting? Throw it out and say, I'm sorry I doubted things. You show me what it is. I have faith in you. I want to walk, al- walk alongside you through the ups and the downs, through the valleys of life. Rock bottom. He is there with you. And we say, Lord, yes, you take care of me. You take care of my doubt no matter what until we get there. He's saying, oh, Jesus. You know, how would he feel? How would you feel? Jesus spoke and said, the disciples whose faith are weak, evil is one, but Thomas immediately got on his knees and rejoiced and saying, my Lord, my Lord. Thomas said, my doubt is gone. And he said, I have faith. He believed fully that Jesus rose from the dead. And that was Jesus standing before him with the scars on his hand. And through that faith and seeing Jesus, what did he do? He said, okay, I saw Jesus and that's it. No, he continued to pursue and persevere. And we have to continue with our faith. And sometimes we have a bad day or whatever it is. Do we give up? No. Why are you saying no? We continue to persevere. We have faith. We trust in him. We know that our faith will increase if we just continue on every day of our lives. His, we let our faith shine. Don't, don't let the darkness overcome us. We want to let his light shine. Continue to have faith. We live Okay, in two different worlds, the li- the world of light and dark, right? Just like our daytime is light and at night it's dark. We rely on this light. And God is our light and at night in the darkness. But there is light. We have the moon. He is always there. 24 hours, seven days a week, he is there. 
the sun and the moon are there. They, they're there. The light is always there. How many of you guys love to go camping? Why do you like going camping? Activities, peace, away from the city and work of the world and all the things to see the stars. At night, right, you get around the campfire and it's getting dark and you have your, your little fire going and then you look up and you see all the stars in the sky, millions and millions of stars. And you look up and your mind is at peace and you're like, oh, there is life, there's things to look at. And you know, like thousands and thousands of stars are there. And, you know, there's millions of people on earth and God knows everyone and there's millions of stars and God knows them too. And wow, and you can think about the stars, how they remind you of his light. How many of you guys took astronomy class or learned about the stars and space? And what did you look learn about? I'm so fascinated with different stars. They have different names. And then they, they explode and they have different, like this one dies, but then it's replaced with new smaller stars or they're replaced based on their age and then they explode. And then years later, then we see them disappear. And God makes new stars just like he makes new people. Mm, it's so amazing. What do we demand? A voice, a vision, a revelation to prove our faith. So something is going to happen, right, in our lives, and we depend on seeing it to ha know that it's, you know, happening, whatever it is. Is this God really changing my life? We want to see the proof. We want to experience God more so that we can read the Bible. And we read the Bible occasionally, right? We read it over and over, and sometimes God shows you a word. Maybe you've read this verse many times, but that word is just there, big and bold. And you're like, I've read this so many times, but this is the word he's saying, here, focus on this. This is important because he knows maybe you're mature at that time to be able to understand. And looking back as a new Christian, you, you read the Bible. Yeah, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. I've read um, all of chapter or John chapter three and all of the book of Matthew in two days. I've read it all and I'm so excited. But as you get older and you read a little bit more chapter by chapter and you focus maybe on just one passage, one paragraph, then things are more specific and then you're impacted. Maybe God knows you're ready to absorb that specific information at that time to grow, to continue to remind you as well. God, okay, to answer our prayers. God will answer your prayers if you open your mind and your heart. If you're blocked off and you're closed off and you haven't forgiven and you're bitter about something, you're not, you're like, oh, I'm not going to get my blessings. I'm not, why am I not getting this? I've been praying. And it's because you're holding things back. You forgive, make a clean slate, and build your relationship with Him. If you're holding back, you're going to hit your ceiling. Do you want to get stuck? No. You want to, okay, so I'm going to forgive whatever I've done wrong. You analyze yourself and you pray and you pray. Like an email, you send an email, you type this email to your friend and you're like, oh, did they not respond? Why are they not responding? You look at your computer and you're like, oh, it's not been sent. It was undelivered to the wrong address, right? The same idea. We're sending these messages to God and they're not getting there and we're like, oh, we're, we're putting this wrong here or we're holding on to something in our heart. We have to, you know, restore everything, fix it up, and then send it on to God and he'll receive it and correspond with us. Support in our faith. Why does it say out? It's supposed to be our. Support in our faith. We have faith, right? But we have to ask for support. And when we're stumbling and we're weak, we can ask for our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, maybe they'll say, don't forget about this and continue to grow and experience God more. We, we learn through our church and our ministry and fellowshipping and reading the Bible and the pastors or whatever it is, maybe the ushers, whoever it is, to help you grow every day, every morning. I always tell people, 
wake up in the morning and say what? Good morning, Lord. I'm ready for a new day. I have a meeting today and I have to go to work and I have to drop my kids off. But Lord, give me the strength to get up and do this with joy, to cook food for my kids, whatever it is, with a smile on my face. Put on the armor of God. I know out there is a battlefield and God is on your side. He's ready to protect you and you're frustrated, but God is there with you. And we see the breakthroughs with God, and then we can have more faith and faith and increase our faith. Jesus defeated death for you. We talked about Easter last week, and that's a reminder. Jesus conquered your sins. He conquered all your frustration, your grieving and your heartbrokenness. He is there to be alongside you to overcome that doubt. But you have to have faith. Jesus really healed. He prayed. He did miracles. All these things. And the disciples were able to see what Jesus had done through his ministry. And when he died and rose again. He stayed on earth for 40 days, and then he said, I'll send the helper, Holy Spirit. And, you know, I'm, they're ready for his second coming. But we could be ready to, you know, to teach what Jesus has taught us. And they faithfully did the, this. And the disciples died and died and died. But then has the w message stopped? No, we've continued to stop to share his message. Now we're his disciples and we can continue his ministry and not give up. You have an option. You can choose doubt or you can choose to believe. Which one is it? Look at your heart. Where are you? If you're holding on and you're holding on to some doubt, all you have to do is say, Lord, show me why I'm doubting. Remove this doubt. I, I have faith that you'll restore me. I'm holding on to this. I want to get rid of it. You take care of it. You provide. And you always take care of everything. You've promised to provide. And we know everything is possible. And maybe we doubt. And our minds are limited. And I'm stuck here in this situation. But through you, we can grow and we can trust in you, and we follow you, and we serve you, Lord. And he will reveal himself to you. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. 2,000 years ago, more than that, Jesus died on the cross. And we believe in him. Jesus rose from the dead and went to heaven. And we still believe because we have faith. I know some people, you know, there's dinosaurs on earth, right? years and years ago and all okay so we had dinosaurs and how many guys believe dinosaur dinosaurs existed right and why do you believe dinosaurs exist right because science scientists and archaeologists have found fossils so we know that they existed people are like oh i've never seen a dinosaur but yes they're extinct now and some people believe um a star crashed on Earth and killed all the dinosaurs or meteor, whatever it is, or maybe from the flood or whatever reason. But there is evidence that dinosaurs existed at one point on the Earth because we have all the fossils all over the Earth. Not here, other countries, archaeologists have found. Where can you see the bones, right? You go to a museum. They have fossils. L.A. County has one. Orange County. Go around. You could see the dinosaur bones, and they're huge. It is amazing how they were able to keep these bones and preserve them. So they don't fade away. It's amazing, right? 
Jesus is, we have to have faith to believe in Jesus. Until we die, then we will see him again. Now, this is the part. Thomas was a truth seeker. You have to be like Thomas. Be a truth seeker. Seek the truth. And who is that? God, the Bible, the truth. Read it. Get to know it. Understand it. Doubt can ruin your belief in the Bible. And that's what I'll be preaching about next week. Here's a little heads up, a sneak peek of next week's sermon. Okay. We will talk about how doubt and this ties in and how does it apply. And I don't want to elaborate on that. We'll save it for next week. So don't miss out on next week talking about how doubt and Adam and Eve and the serpent was all involved in that. It's not just one story. But there are several stories where we can learn how doubt can destroy. Earlier I said the seed, the seeds that you plant, you can plant doubt or you can plant faith. Next week we'll focus on those and how to plant the seed. Jesus died for you. So when we doubt and we're we're praying, this comes before us, we pray that the solution is made evident so that we can believe in him. I guess I'll preach a little early. Satan wants you not to believe in death. He wants you to doubt death, the cross. Not there anymore. Satan wants you to doubt it. And that's, we'll talk more about next week. Don't miss out. Let's close in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your wonderful word that Marissa was able to share from you, Lord, about doubt and how we can focus on Thomas and his doubt and how it applies to us all because we doubt like Thomas. Help us to be like Thomas to doubt but turn to you and believe in you again and give us more faith to be stronger. I know we all go through doubt, and some of us are going through doubt right now. Yes, Lord, we know that. But, Lord, let us be like Thomas to see Jesus and to get on our knees and say, Lord, you are my Lord, and I believe you'll take care of me. No matter what, you will take care of it. Lord, I have faith in you. Help us to grow from this, Lord. Help us to pick the right seeds to plant. If we're planting the seeds of doubt, take them and throw them away and replace them with seeds of faith. But it is important that we're willing to take it and plant it from you. We have to be willing to give you the doubt, Lord. Help us to grow in you. Let us grow in our faith. We need that, especially in these times, Lord. Yesterday we're talking about money and inflation and the value of the dollar going down and food is limited and all these things that are happening. But for me to see, you know, the time is coming close and you're preparing us for you, Lord. We ask that you bless each person who is here as we soon depart to go home. Strengthen them and protect them as they drive home. As we spend time with our family and friends for the rest of the week, whatever we're doing through our week, work, taking care of our family, give us strength to continue to hold on to you, Lord. As we all agree and we call upon your name, Jesus, we believe you are there that you, t- you provide for us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you.